Uh, hey, David. Thank you for joining. Pleasure. Yeah. How's it going out there? Good. I'm in London and, and it's sunny. So every sunny day in London is a celebration. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, Martin, I'm guessing you're, you're, in, you're in Miami, right? I'm, I'm actually in Washington. I'm visiting my sister here for today. So um, I'm a little bit north. I think one of the first things I want to know is about what stage you feel Future Rave is at as a, as a movement, you know, considering the things that you've accomplished with it, considering things that you're doing with it right now. Uh, and yeah, like what, what is something that you're proud of that you've accomplished with, with it? Well, I can answer that. Um, well, it, it's uh, like everything successful it always brings a lot of copies and, and we, uh, we take pride in it. We, we were never angry about it or we is we're more like oh please everyone this is the sound we love let's embrace it together and 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 make it a movement and um but of course uh, it's what always happened when there's a formula that really works uh then you know uh, it gets a little bit saturated so we decided to try to reinvent ourselves and do a kind of uh 2.0 uh, type of sound. And we came with um, uh, permanence uh, and uh, with Alive Again. And I think those those two records, they, they said they would go a little more towards underground, but still with the, with the big sound. And, and this is, we always, we always took our influences from from underground, but we felt like because we're playing big stages, we need to make it sound fatter, you know, and 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 more like uh, more energy in it. And so we always had this combination of trends, techno and EDM, let's say. In the two last releases, we maybe put a little bit on the side, the trendy elements, and we made it a little more a little more towards techno. It's interesting because there are a lot of uh, underground DJs that normally would cut one of their own legs before playing a David Guetta record. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think this is what is so cool for me to work together with, uh, with Morton because, you know, um, in the same way that when I did Jack Back for Underground House and Take House, uh, having my, a different identity together with Morton, it allows me to be someone else. And you know, like I've been a DJ since I was 14 and I'm 54. So that's a lot of years. So imagine like playing one sound for uh, 40 years that I would just kill myself, you know? So I just love music in general and, um, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for what we're doing together with Morton because it's all about having fun. We always had the same conversation. We, always, we were always saying, like, oh, my God, we can't play this EDM sound anymore. Like, it, it's not, it's crazy. It's too many years. Like, everything sounds the same. Like, what do you play? What do you, we're always talking about this. And this is how we started. We just created something that was missing in our DJ sets. And, and I think what we were missing, the whole community was missing. And that's why, you know, so many big DJs embraced uh, this sound. And, and yes, we're proud of it. And yes, we, uh, we're making it evolve. I agree 100%. And if I can supplement a, a little bit, it, something too, I think is that uh, personal I'm very proud of is that it's true, you know, we, we made a formula that, that not only worked for us, but worked for a lot of people. And we had a lot of record that kind of had a sound that was very distinct. And it's very easy to ride that wave and continue to make this same kind of sound because you know it works. But we kind of made a little bit of a change and we, we challenged ourselves and the audience and, and we released records like uh, Alive Again and Permanence and some of the IDs that we've been teasing and doing different stuff. We are, we are challenging the, the sound and, and ourselves, And this is something I'm very proud of. I really love that we're doing that. And then I think most important is that we are having fun. You know, when we go on stage now, we are excited because we're playing music that we like. 
and we have so many new things and edits and things that we can play around with the sound and it allows us to go so many different directions so when we go on stage we have this like the same feeling as when we started being DJ. we're like oh man i can't wait for the audience to hear this and it's it's really exciting and and that's a key word is that we're having fun yeah absolutely i think that completely comes through you know and um uh, and and i think you also sort of told me a bit about like you know the kind of shape and direction it's getting in when you sort of uh, put out the unreleased music out there in your sets and when like you know you have those things that you can test out there at your shows as well um but i want to ask about uh, like more than like you had mentioned that one of the influences obviously and you know david also mentioned this that underground techno is one of the influences but i want to ask what do you feel is sort of like a unlikely or maybe a surprising influence uh, for future rave because you know when i heard permanence like i felt like you know i listened to a lot of metal so for me like i somehow kind of sort of perceived it through that lens a little bit as well you know i was like well, it sounds a little bit dark and metal <laughs> You, you know, uh, I think with music, um, uh, like everything has been done. So the reality is in order to create, you just combine things that have not been combined yet. And the musical rules, they, they kind of always the same. Uh, what changes is the sonics because uh, music is always dependent on technology. And, uh, you know, like uh, the, the new, lots of new plugins, lots of new, uh, um, the synths allow us to be, uh, uh, um, synths like, uh, like uh, Serum, they, they have more, uh, how can I say, they, they're easier to manipulate than uh, the older synths. You know, like in the 80s, uh, you, you had... Uh, and the the Korg M1, it was almost impossible. The sound was good, but you just take the preset and you play it. You know, uh, now uh, with with uh, since like Serum, you can you can really create your sounds. Like this is what we've done with Alive Again. We really created something that have it's it's like a, a sound that was never done before. So um, all this technology helps us to evolve. And, and you know, about what, what you were saying, um, what, I, what makes me so happy about Future Rave now is uh, I've done so many years of, of records that were like big crossover pop records. And um, because those records can be uh, copied in terms of, uh, uh, you know, songs. And it, it, it happened to me. I, remember when I released that When Love Takes Over, for example, um, some Italian band, uh, I played it in the clubs and some Italian band released it before me, like made a cover even before it was released. So, so then uh. I started to be paranoid when I was making, having big records and I would not test them anymore. And because Future Rave is not commercial, Future Rave is, is we're not trying to be uh, everywhere on the radio and, and, you know, so, so it's back to the way I was doing it in the early 90s, at the end of the 80s, when I was like, it was the beginning of house music and we would just like make beats and test them. And the ones that work the best, we release them. And, and you know, that's an amazing feeling and also yeah. it's an amazing feeling as a dj but also the experience that we give to the the, the people that are at the festival or in the club uh, is so unique because we play so much music that they never heard before and and, and this is really extraordinary uh, in terms of experience for us as djs and and for for the people but really, ah, huh? it's crazy. Imagine we, you know, when uh, when there was the show in uh, in Saudi Arabia, Middle Beast, we played like uh, 18, 19 future rave records uh, yeah. that most of these people they have never heard before, and they were yeah. completely crazy. But they are like, what is this? this is and incredible. by the way, you know, when you were talking about like influences and stuff, uh, I think this is um, this is uh, exactly what I wanted to say. We we made a track specially because we were uh, playing Middle Beast. 
and we made a, a track that was using um, uh, oriental sounds like uh, the that bukas and, and uh, oriental percussions and um and we did it just for the festival but but then we're like oh this is really really working like this could be a direction you know and i think one of the the moments that uh, uh was really the most uh impressive for, for me because I, of course you know I, I'm a DJ producer, but I'm also a fan. And I remember when Timberland started to use Indian instruments, you know, and I was like, what? Like, this is crazy. I make hip hop tracks with some Indian instruments. And that's, that was what made him sound so fresh. So, so, so we, we made this record using some Oriental instrument into the future wave. This might be, you know, the, day, the next direction we take, we don't know, like we just played, we see the reaction and, and but yes, I, I really think um, there's always some new influences that we can take. Uh, it, it's just that approach of a music that is emotional, that is um, uh, uh, of quality, uh, that has an underground feel and that is full of energy, but, in, but with that, we can do a lot of different things. But, well, also because, you know, when, when, when we started to make music together, David and I, you know, the, the, the main straight states electronic scene were a completely different place than it is just today, you know, three years later. But I don't think we would even have dreamed of that we would release a record like Permanence that would go kind of viral in the underground community you know and we would get support from all the underground djs and they would play it like peak time in their sets kind of you know uh, so so we we uh, i think the the direction we are we are taking and the chances we are taking right now is super healthy for us and also it keeps it fresh and fun for us you know we we uh, we see a lot of people there making the future wave sound that we kind of started and did the last two years and for us we are involving and future rave we need to be involved always and and i think the, the the it's true what, what morton is saying is like you know when we started with this it felt like so challenging because it, it felt a little bit too underground for main stage and and then it got accepted and it became a new standard and now we're pushing it again and a record like Permanence that is really like, we know some proper, proper underground DJs that play this record. And to see that we, we now manage to push the, you know, we, we push the envelope, we keep pushing, we keep pushing. And this is like an incredible satisfaction to feel like, because I, I don't know, I always feel like a DJ should satisfy the crowd because we're here for them, but also educate them at the same time a little bit. And it's always find this balance, you know, on, on like, you know, how you're gonna be just a crowd pleaser, but, or, 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 or are you gonna be a DJ that doesn't care and just look at his turntables and, and does his thing, but doesn't care if people have a good time or not. I, I think we were always, Morton and I, a little bit in the middle and but we we've we're managing to please ourselves a hundred percent and please the crowd so this is really the dream of any dj you know yeah it's true it's very very true <laughs> imagine yeah i mean and speaking about like what morton said about when, when you guys first got together like i was reading about how I think it was like you guys met in the gym and then like the next time was like at a festival somewhere, if, if I'm not wrong, like, I mean, some of the origin stories are like that, but yeah, they were like, I wanted like, how, how do you meet, uh, how do you make a friend like that? Like, you know, like at a gym and then like the next time you guys, <laughs> like at like a festival or something and then you find out that, oh, that, that guy at the gym, he was actually a DJ. <laughs> well, well, you know, so. When I met David first time in the gym, you, you know, of course, I knew of, of David. He is the biggest superstar, you know. Uh, he's the guy who, who made electronic music uh, 
global, you know? So I meet him in LA and I just moved to LA. Of course, I was obsessed with meeting him. And if I'm not wrong, I actually think, David, you came to me. Yeah, I came to you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, I'm a little bit shy and humble, you know, not humble. I'm a little bit shy. So, you know, when he came over, he, he was talking about working out and stuff. And in my head, I was just like, let's talk about music. But I didn't really get to that part. So we were talking about working out and then, okay, uh, see you later and whatever. And then like a year after, uh, he played Tomorrowland in Belgium and I sneaked in backstage somehow and I went over and said hi to him and he doesn't remember this, but we took a picture together and then we met again. And then I kind of put in effort to network and meet him, you know? So I was playing a festival in Mexico where he was playing. I played like two to three in the afternoon. He was playing headlining, of course, uh, one at night. I stayed the whole day and I became friends with the backstage manager who allowed me to come on stage when David was playing so I could meet him. Wow. So I so I put in effort these things. And then when we started talking a little bit, I don't know if you remember, David, I drove to Vegas to see you play. Yeah, I remember that. And David, he was playing at Excess in Vegas, this like super club back with people. And I drove from LA there, you know, like a uh, traffic Friday afternoon, nine hours. And I, I went into uh, Excess, I bought the ticket, I stood in the, in the crowd, like dancing, and I wanted to feel it, you know, because we were starting to, to become friends a little bit. So I wanted to like, you know, if you talk to me about his set, or we were talking about music, I wanted to know what's going on. And the best way to do that is be in the middle of the crowd. So I was just standing there, you know, and for like the whole set, he didn't see me and he played for like three hours, he kept going, it was insane. And then suddenly it was like the... It was like a story from the Bible. There was this light beam that hit me. I was in the middle like, yo. And he, I could see him like doing this with his eyes. And he's like, Morten, what are you doing? Come here, come here. I'm like, okay. So I walked up in the DJ booth and, and you know, we, we, we became really good friends. So, yeah. I, uh -huh. I, I, would, I would say, you know, more than David, no, I did these things to, to get close to him. I wanted to build my relationship with him and also, of course, be friends with him. But I wanted to learn from him with music and, you know, yeah. yeah. And he started help. He started helping me, booking me, and uh, any beats had to open for him. He helped me. We, you know, with do some some records I was working on. He would give me his feedback, and 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 we became friends. Wow. <laughs> yeah, David. I'm I'm guessing like you know this is like one of the most unique friend stories among I'm sure several others, but yeah, a very unique like way that you've made a friend. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, I think it's great that, that we're friends for years before working together. I think it's very cool. It's very cool because then, of course, there is uh, so much uh, trust between us, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, lastly, I, I wanted to ask you guys about, you know, since I'm speaking to you from India, like, you know, uh, I, I know that shows have been a little bit on and off around the world because of the pandemic, but uh, yeah, like, would you intend on bringing future rave here? Like, what what is uh, what are the plans like in that sense? In India, you mean? Yeah, in India. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be sick. <laughs> well, we're ready. When we invited, we come. No problem. We would love that. Yes. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that, would be a, that would be incredible. Yeah. And uh, before you go, I wanted to ask, like, what, what is sort of coming up for you individually as well as together through uh, 2022, you know, since the year has just started? Well, we, we kind of just started the year and we, you know, we started releasing uh, permanents right away. And, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, things, you know, unfinished projects and, you um, you know, David, he just released a song uh, f Friday. You know, we are, we are busy and working on a lot, as always. Uh, cool. Um, all right, Martin. All right, David. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the Thank time. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Day.